Okay, this video is going to show you how you can identify a linear relation from either looking at a graph or looking at a table of values. So starting off, let's kind of define what it means for something to be linear. Linear just means that it's going to be a straight line graph. So if I have a graph and it looks kind of like this and it goes in a straight line, even though it has a slope, it's still straight, I can still make it with a ruler, then that would be linear. Or if I have a line that has no slope, but it stays like that and continues on with no slope, again, I can draw that with a ruler, that would be a linear line. And if I have one that starts off kind of straight, but then it curves upward, that would not be linear. Okay, so this one is non linear. And the reason for that is I can't draw that with a ruler. It's not a straight line and the slope starts off being nothing and then it gets steeper and steeper and steeper. So the slope changes as it goes. So in order for it to be linear, it has to be a straight line and it has to have a constant slope to your line. Okay. So those are the requirements, straight line and a constant slope. So if we take a look over here at the graph, I'm going to quickly draw this line that's represented on my table of values. So I have negative one and two. It's my first point, zero, zero, one and negative two, two and negative four, and then three and negative six. Okay, so there's my line. And if I were to use a ruler, which I don't have on me at the moment, it would make a nice straight line. So this, just by looking at the graph, we know that this is a linear relationship because it makes a straight line. And we can look and we can see that the slope is constant. Okay, and the way that we can look more closely at slope, I'm just gonna move this down a bit. So when we're thinking about slope, what we're really thinking about is the rise over run. What that means, when I start here at this point, when I'm going to my next point, I'm looking at how much do I rise or how much do I change going up and down? In this case, I change negative two. So I rise a negative two and I'm actually descending. So a rise of negative two, and then a run of positive one. So I'm going one in the direction um, towards the positive value on the X axis. Okay, so it's how much I rise or how much I change going up and down over how much I change going left and right. So if this is a constant slope from each point, we're gonna have the same ratio of rise to run. So I have down two over one, down two, over one, that takes me to my next point. Down two, over one, I'm at my next point. Down two, over one. So you can see the slope remains constant. The rise over run remains the same from point to point. So that way we know that the slope is constant. This does form a straight line, so it is a linear graph. Uh, another way of thinking of slope is delta y over delta x, which just means the change in the y value over the change in the x value. So change in y over change in x. And so that's exactly what we're doing when we're looking at slope here. So here, my y value is at two. When I go down to my next point, my y value is changing by two. It's getting two less. Okay, so it's going from two down to zero at this point. And we can see that in our table of values. We have two, we have zero, negative two. So it's going down by two every time. Uh, so our y value is changing by two. Our x value, we went over one. So our x value is getting greater by one every time. So here, my x value was a negative one but on this point, my x value is zero, so it's gone up one. And then on this point, my x value is one, so it's gone up one. So we can see that in this particular example, change in y is negative 
2. My y value is getting uh, smaller by 2 every time. And my x value is getting greater by, whoops, by 1 every time. So my slope is a negative 2 over 1. So down 2, so that's negative 2, and over 1, just positive 1. So that's a couple different ways of looking at slope. Rise over run, and the change in y over the change in x. And if you'll notice in this one, just for a little bit of extra information, it's a negative 2 over 1. Our slope is negative. Whenever we have a negative slope, our line is going to go downhill from left to right. So in this example, on the other hand, my slope is going uphill from left to right. This would end up being a positive slope. Um, and this one has no slope at all. So it's zero. Okay, so that's uh, one example for how to determine if a line or a graph is linear uh, based on just looking at the graph. So let's take a look at this graph down here instead. So I'm gonna quickly graph that one. So I have negative two comma four. Negative two, one, two, three, four. I have a negative one and one. So that goes right here. I have a zero, zero, so that goes here. I have a one and one, that's here. And then I have a two and four. Okay, so this one we can already see definitely does not form a straight line. Okay, I cannot draw that with a ruler. Um, that's a shape that we call a parabola in math. So we know that this is not a linear relation. And if we look at the slope between the two lines, or the, the various points, so from this point to this point, I'm rising a negative three and I'm running a negative one. So if I'm looking at my rise over run, I'm rising a negative three and I'm running a positive one. Now to my next point, I'm only rising a negative one and then I'm running one. Okay, and then to my next point, I'm actually rising a positive one and I'm running one. So you see that my, my fraction is changing. My slope or my uh, ratio of my slope rise to run is changing. It's not constant. In order for it to be constant, um, it, needs to be, it needs to rise and run the same amount every time. Okay, so this one is not linear because I can't draw it with a straight line and the slope is changing at various points on the graph. Okay, now let's take a look at how we determine if a graph is a linear relation from a table of values. Okay, so pretend I did not have these graphs over here at all um, and I just had a table of values. I mean, of course you could graph it and then see but you don't always want to stop and draw a graph, draw out the axis, number them. It takes a little bit of time. So you can actually tell if it is linear or not just by looking at the table of values. Remember that we talked about how slope can be thought of in terms of the change in the y value over the change in the x value. And uh, it's a linear relation if that change in y over change in x is constant from point to point. So let's look, this is our first point, negative one comma two, and this is our second point, zero comma zero. Let's see from the first point to the second point, how much did my x value change? It changed by positive one, okay? Let's see how much my y value changed. From two to zero, it changed a negative two, okay? Let's see if that change remains constant from point to point. So we go to our next point, which is one comma negative two. My x goes from zero to one, so it again increases by one. Does my y increase by negative two again? It does, it goes from zero to negative two. Okay, if we keep going, my x is still increasing by one every time and my y is increasing or decreasing, I guess, by two every time, so negative two. 
So you can see that my change in X and my change in Y is constant. So if they remain constant the whole way down your table of values, then you know that this is a linear relationship. Okay. And if I wanted to continue this table of values, that would be very easy for me because I can see a pattern here. My X's are going up by one. So if I can put a four and five in here and I can, um, I can estimate that or I can um, extrapolate that this is going to be negative eight. This is going to be negative 10 because I'm continuing that pattern of decreasing by two every time. Um, so I would go four, negative eight and five, negative 10. And we would see that that still follows that same straight line because my slope is still going down by two and over one down by two over one. My slope remains the same. Okay, so by looking at table of values, as long as um, your X and your Y are both changing at the same rate um, or at the same rate within each column, then you know it's a linear graph. So let's look at this other one that we know is not linear and let's see what our changes are like. So on my X side, I am increasing by one every time, just like my last example. So from point to point, my X is going up by one every time. So here from four to one, I decreased by three. From one to zero, I only decreased by one. From zero to one, I actually went up one and then I went up three. So you can see on this side, my Y value is not changing constantly um, in relation with my X value. Okay, so my right, and we saw that in our rise over run and our slope, it changed negative three over one, then negative one over one, and then one over one. So we have negative three over one, negative one over one, and one over one. So you can see how these um, changes in X and Y value relate to our slope. Um, we are essentially finding the slope when we're finding the change in these values. So we can see that because they're not constant, it's not um, changing by the same rise and run every time from point to point, that this is not a linear relationship. Okay, so that's kind of a little shortcut if you don't want to draw out an entire graph and see if it's straight. You can just look and see if there's a constant pattern here between as the X and the Y change value. Okay, so I hope that that video helps you a little bit in being able to identify what is a linear relation either by looking at a graph or by just looking at a table of values.